What's going on, everybody? Live Farmer 73 here. Let me get y'all a little closer, I guess. So probably I can see a little better. I'm exhausted. But I'm finished. I'm gonna have to go over to the other side and let them know that I am done. How you doing day-to-day -day lifestyle? How you doing? I'm just trying to give everybody a perspective. Hey, uh, Sonora. Hey, Calvin. Hey, Trina's Journey. Dave Busby, what's going on? Hey, Miss Native Cherokee. Old McMoney. Gigi, how you doing? Vision Preparedness, what's going on, my brother? Uh, Peacock, Belinda, Child of Yah, what was this other one? Rick Sean, how you doing? Uh, welcome to the Greenhouse Lounge, everybody. Hey, Joseph DJ, uh, Will, Will Berta, Delgada, Brian, Gold Butterfly. Hey, my car running over. What's up, my camping buddy? Rich Dad. What's going on, Rich Dad? Uh, Francis Peterson, CJ, Country Hustle 101, Cato Family Farm, Make Money, Can Can. How you doing, Can Can? Uh, Wanda Edwards. Uh, hey, whole new perspective in the house. How y'all doing? Um, Lena and Grace Gines. Myra McLean. Myra McLean, I'm going to have to hit you up. Uh, let me see. It's good to see everybody in here. And I'm not in here for no reason right now. Uh, I just kind of was like, if y'all got any questions whatsoever, <laughs> um, I, the reason I put out so many videos yesterday, because I knew how, how far along we were. And I was like, I'm just going to just bust them all out. You know, they weren't really for views or anything. Um, Francis, it's no problem. It's okay. <laughs> um, they were just references, pieces of this journey. And I know it's so many, it's so many pieces to this puzzle. How you doing, Pamela? It's so many pieces to this puzzle that I was just hoping. And I know everybody don't want to see this. This ain't for those people. This is for them people with that dream, like I was telling y'all before, that need to see this. When I'm on a journey, how you doing? Peacock say, I'm proud of you and your family. Thank you. Hey, Rucker Homestead. Said, What's up, bro? Great videos. Thank you. Uh, and said, need Lady Led site to talk about purchasing real estate. I'm going to give you that too, okay? I'm, I'm going to put it in the description box below because right now I ain't going to keep remembering to say it. A uh, whole new perspective. Say, y'all getting it done. Yes. Yes, we are. Matter of fact, Lady Led is on the whole other side of the land somewhere. And I'm done for the day. Uh, the kids is on the other side. And I'm about to go over there and tell them I'm done, done, done. Uh, as far as the stumps, I took the stumps all the way down. I might have to chew at a couple more, a little bit more. But for the most part, I'm, I'm done. You see, I was able to drive my, my truck with 50 series tires on it to the back. So, uh. Hey, uh, Shelly, say caught you live. I'm a new subscriber. My wife, uh, my wife has been following you for years and told me I should tune in. Thank you. And tell your wife I said thank you for that. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, Gigi, exactly. I'm, I'm just taking the people that need that. Like I was saying before, I'm one of those people. I will literally watch every video, even if they three or four or six hours long. If I'm on a particular journey, I can tell you this. Um, when I was about to buy a RV back in Toledo, back in Toledo, me and my wife and my family watch RV movies and videos every day every day learning we was reading rv books and everything we could the knowledge we could absorb we was on it every day it was like we didn't even watch normal tv anymore so i know if you are like me 
you don't mind sitting through 25 minutes of me and my family walking through the land. You know, if you like me, I'm a person will literally, um, Eco Neighbor put out a video earlier this summer and he was on his tractor just knocking down trees, doing it up, working his land. I'm the kind of person that will sit and watch that all freaking day. Hey, uh, MTG, GV, MTG, that always throw me off. I will literally watch. If I'm on that journey, I will sit and watch you. Even if I'm dreaming to be on that journey, because this is why there are people say you're not at this level yet. You're not here yet. You will be. And watching this just put just, oh my God, it gives you so, certain things. You're like, I'm going to do that when it's my turn. That way you ain't wasting no time. Like I'm going to do that right there. And if I feel like doing something else different later, then I'll take that journey. Whole new perspective. Say your videos are a great inspiration. Thank you. Whole new perspective. Uh, African dreaming in the house, African dreaming, African. There you go. What's going on, my brother and sister? Look, hey, this is it. I said, I said, look, I'm, I'm a, I'm gonna show you all a little something, cause African dreaming, they coming back to the states soon, and they gonna be working some land. So I'm putting this on. I'm just doing this. You see, it ain't no creativity. I'm not even talking in half the videos. Nothing. I'm just, we just working, just work, work, work. The, the video on um, vision preparedness say same lead, uh, learn from those who have done it. Amen. The video of me, Princess Led and Lady Led walking through the land, that we did that for hours. We did it for hours. I edited it out and still was like this 23 minutes. I can't get no no shorter than 23 minutes because it's it's it, this stuff is crucial. And that's the part I wanted to show people is when you when you doing this, hey pieces of April, when you doing this, it's certain things you can't leave out. And it's it's always it don't seem like much at at, at first. Pieces of April. Jay, it don't seem like some of these details that I'm showing y'all, like painting trees, that seemed ridiculous. Like, why didn't he just edit all of that out? Why didn't he edit that part out? Why, why didn't he edit walking through the wetlands out? All of that was important. Believe it or not, you will see it was important. And that's why I was down in the wetlands. That's where I'm going to have my pond built. I was down in the wetlands fussing at my daughter and my wife because my wife want her to learn the hard way and walk through the, the slop. And I'm like, no. Um, Brian, you say you... Uh, okay, there we go. Um, what's going on, uh, Brent? Walking through that swamp now she know, don't be just walking through here because some of those, what y'all, what I edited out, some of those steps you take down in that swampy area, you can't get out of. And that's, my wife was right. Let her learn. J3GS Farms, what's going on, my brother? What's going on? So I really kind of just wanted to show y'all the result. That This is the end result of this phase. The next phase is getting our cabin well, her cabin put back here. So as soon as her cabin is put back here, that's going to be another phase of this. And it probably ain't going to be a whole bunch of talking and stuff either. Uh, so this is it. And us walking through the land, what you saw, even though I sometimes I forgot I had the camera on. And when I went back to watch the video, the reasons I left some of that stuff in where we was fussing, because we was fussing, that was real. I left it in because some important stuff was being said. And I was like, ain't no need of me trying to fake it out. This is how we talk. You know, we all go back and forth. And see, this is the part me and Lady Led 
was was bumping heads on. I walk this land all the time. I know where I'm going. And she was like, no, we do this way. Okay. But I wanted her to learn too. Whole new perspective say, I love meeting Princess Liz. She is your mini me. <sighs> That's why me and her butt heads. That's why me and her butt heads. So what I showed y'all was the real us and the fussing. Yeah, we was fussing. Because, you know, it was stuff that Lady Led did that I was like, hmm, that's a good idea. Where I would have did it completely different. She had to make me understand her her vision of what she was seeing. And I'm going a, I'm to a say something on that too. And then I'm going to take some questions. Literally, we're going to walk back and then we're going to take some questions. It's hard for a content creator or anybody to let you see their perspective of anything. Thank you, Resilient Dad. Thank you, my brother. Say, tapping in from the Bay with much respect. Thank you, man. Say, uh, let those, let those told, do, let the doers do. Uh, I, I missed something. I missed something. Thank you, brother. Thank you. <laughs> but um, it's hard. How you doing, uh, Div? How you doing? It's it's hard to let somebody see your perspective, even when you're growing in a, um, in a garden. It's just hard to show people that part of you. So we're going to go on back right now. We're going to go on back. All right now. All right. We're going we gonna to go on back here. Oh, drop my hat. Just so I can show y'all exactly how much we got done. They about to come back here. So this, this is all the stuff we cleared. And we've been, we've been transporting firewood, loading up the trailer and taking all the firewood to the other side. But I'm leaving some here for them. Like this tree right here is full of fat wood. So I made, I had the kids just pile all of that up so I can divvy that fat wood up. And that's all a rotten tree of firewood and this is pretty much it I, I'll do this for you let me do that for you hold on there we go now this is this is a prettier side to me I like that And I will put it right by this sticker holly tree, holly bush that my daughter didn't want to get rid of. Okay, now that we here, we came back. I chopped down every tree for 200 feet and 50 feet wide. 200 feet back and 50 feet wide. I measured it. And this, you see, I can park about four or five of my trucks here if I wanted to. But this is, this is it. Did I have any questions whatsoever about any video that I put out this week? I knocked all these trees down and believe it, it's so much wood. This firewood. Oh my God. It's so much firewood. I, let me tell y'all, can I? Su suggest, I ain't gonna tell you what to do. I'm gonna suggest something. Please go get a chainsaw. If if you plan on getting some land, matter of fact, when you get the chainsaw, it's just like a firearm. Uh, you, you need some training if you don't know what you're doing because you will take your whole leg off. You'll take your whole hand off. And uh, get some training first, please. Start with an electric chainsaw. I got a little electric chainsaw. But even Lady Led, everybody like, um, yeah, Trina's Journey, we've been putting in some, some crazy work. Crazy. And 
I'm telling you, I'm loving every minute. I'm tired, but doggone it, what an accomplishment. What an accomplishment. Get you a chainsaw. If you get some land, get a dang on chainsaw. If you're too scared of a chainsaw, I understand. I do. But I'm telling you, you gonna have you you're gonna be removing some trees. If you scared of a chainsaw, don't listen. If you scared of just like a firearm, if you scared of it, you need to be trained properly by a professional. Don't look at me. Don't look at people on YouTube. Go to a professional and learn how to use that chainsaw properly. Uh, vision preparedness. Do I got a log splitter, brother? I just brought mine. I just brought mine and put it on my my land right now because I said I need it. I ain't gonna be able to be swinging that axe all day and night because this is a lot of wood. So I got my log splitter on the other side and I'm gonna be showing y'all that because I'm gonna test. I got electric log splitter. I'm gonna be testing it on some of these solar power generators because it the surge, the first surge, I think it goes all the way up to like 2600 surge and it only uses 600 watts. So I'm gonna be using and testing a lot of solar power generators with it. One, I've been using already, so I know it worked, but we're gonna go from there. But I need a gas one. African Dreaming in the house says, uh, see you use your PPE and the orange vest should really encourage folks to use that too. African Dreaming, uh, Jay, I think that's you behind the, behind the map. Listen, I'm so glad you brought that up. I'm so glad you brought that up. As you can see, I had, I forgot I had this on. I had my, my normal hat is in the trailer. Cause I wanna, I wanna thank everybody that kept saying, Led, uh, Princess Led need on a hard hat. Princess Head need, she need on some, some safety glass. She needed this, she did. And I just let people talk because they did, they had, that's, it's a video. And the little stuff that y'all seen me letting her chop down a tree about that big around, I'm telling you, this the part I appreciate everybody's concern. It's two parts to that. <laughs> it's like you telling another parent, don't be spanking your baby. That's You shouldn't do that. That's abuse. Knowing your baby just robbed a bank. Okay. I done raised her for almost 30 years. I know what I'm doing. That's the part that I didn't want to go into because that can go that can go buck wild, right? The good part about it was everybody was concerned, but I do need to let everybody know that reminder again. It's YouTube. It's things is edited. Edited. I just wanted her to use a little handsaw to cut her first little tree. It was no different than cutting a piece of birthday cake. Ain't no way, as a matter of fact, if y'all go to the video of us working, like I'm running a chain, the hard chainsaw, and they throwing logs. If y'all go to that video, you hear me and Lady Led, as a matter of fact, at the very, very, very end of that video, Lady Led grabs the hatchet like, yeah, y'all can't have that. <laughs> yeah, because I, I can't afford for y'all to be chopping yourselves in the leg or something. We didn't even let them use a, a hatchet. While we was going to be gone. So think about that. Now the other part about the safety equipment. If you. If you don't. This. this let, me, let me be honest with you. This is one of the most uncomfortable. Things. That you could be wearing. While you working. Ain't no need in lying. I used to wear one years ago with several jobs I've had. This is the most one of the most uncomfortable things that you will have when you trying to work and you sweating and it's hot, it's sticky, it's muggy, or even when it's cold. This is damn uncomfortable. But for most people, if this, I pray this has never happened to you now. I've got bonked on the head a couple of times. Luckily, it wasn't by nothing too serious. But I've been bonked on the head enough to know, yeah, don't, don't come out here without that. Okay, so don't let, the, don't let the YouTube videos fool you about me and my safety game. Because 
No, no. Now, all my, I had to go buy all new hats and stuff because all my other stuff is at my house. So that's why I bought all new equipment. Plus, I didn't have enough for everybody. So I thank everybody for, for, you know, reminding us about the safety and everything. Because um, I tell you what, I'm a, there was a tree. I'm trying to figure out where it was. This is the pile of it. This is, this is some of it. Cause I've carted a lot of it, most of it. Through the land, I'm trying to figure it. Yeah, this the one. Let me show you something. You see this pile right here? You see this? I'm trying to find that piece. Oh, here it go. Here go, here go part of it right here. Right here. I'm, I can't believe it. Let me show you something. This tree. This tree was rotten. Look. That branch coming off of this tree was rotten. Watch this. <clears throat> Look at that. Did you see that? All I had to do was drop it and it and it exploded. See it? Okay, I cut down two major, major dangerous trees. No, it wasn't, it wasn't termites. That thing was just, it probably termite now, but it was rotten, man. Let me tell you something. The way I was coming in to hit that tree, thank you, who said it? Colleen, it was a widow maker. The way I was coming in, if you don't pay attention, let me show you this. This will help you too. Before I cut a tree, I look at the bottom and then I look at the top. You look at every branch, every single branch. Before you start knocking around at the bottom of that tree, Look at the top of that tree. You know? I'm, it's it's kind of like humans, right? Before you go to messing with the top, you better check out the bottom. <laughs> you, you just got to gotta know what, what you're dealing with, okay? Uh, you got to know who you're dealing with. So, before you get in too deep, mess yourself all up. So, <laughs> so anyway... You, you got to look up and look at every branch because if you start banging around, say I, I come in and I start sawing that bottom and I need to put a wedge in it. So I'm hitting my wedges with my sludge hammer. That vibration is making them fall constantly, right? So before I drop that tree and I'm telling you this, that that's where it was right there before i dropped that tree i was i was sawing it and i'm looking up i had to just come in from a whole nother angle i just had to come in from a whole nother angle because the branch was coming off like this like a horn like you're trying to make a muscle right and when i start tapping the wedge under there that sucker part of that broke off it it probably wouldn't have hit me from if i would have did it the right way came from the op the real way but still you you don't want that you don't want it so any questions because i you know me i could go on and on especially about this oh oh and i'm gonna show y'all we call this tree the twizzler uh while cutting trees you should always watch the top right Say, I've been looking to buy some land and see you. And I see you do live streams. Are you using Starlink or different method because your connection is great? No, I'm still using that same one everybody was warning me about. Um, I ain't going to even mention their name. Because everybody gave me hell about them. And I, I've been telling them I've been using this stuff for a while. So I'm not even going to mention the name.
I'm not using Starlink though. Uh, she is sunshine. Hey, she is sunshine. Say, you don't want to take a chance of anything falling and bouncing off another tree to get you. Exactly. Exactly. Um, it was something I wanted to show y'all. I can't. Oh, oh, the Twizzler tree. Hey, uh, Trina. Oh, got you. Um, the Twizzler tree was a, a tree that was, I'm going to say one third of it was fat wood because it was a dead tree. I'm going to show you right now. This tree right here, you see a whole bunch of the stumps that I, I cut off. But you see this tree? This tree is all fat wood. All of this is fat wood. All of that. You can smell it. It smells like perfume, like fresh, pure pine oil, and almost like a baby powder. But this tree was twisted. I want to show you how this wood. It was twisted and leaning. You see that lean? It got a gangster lean on it. It was leaning. And it had a twist. And it was rotten. Now, watch this. I'm, I'm, I'm really going to... It's on this side of the 50 feet. It's on this side. Remember, I cleared 50 feet wide. So it went up twisting, rotten, and it went all the way over and touched this tree way over here. I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know what I was going to do. Matter of fact, I sat and I studied on that thing. We took a lunch break. I chilled. I relaxed. I studied. Cutting down trees is kind of like playing pool. Just because you hit it this way don't mean it's going to fall that way. Can you cut some of the branches off first? I'm not climbing up there. N no. I mean, you can if you're going to climb up there. I drop trees. I'm not a tree trimmer. That's, a prof that's professional. Uh, Vision say, I have a 75-foot widow maker. I have to uh, take it down next spring. Exactly. Man, get that out of there. Get them out of there. I had this dog on. We call it the Twizzler because it was literally twisted. Twisted like a freaking Twizzler uh, stick. Um, right, no need to, well, you want to hear something crazy? You say no need to with the amount of space that I have, like climbing a tree. I started all the way out to a clearing that y'all have seen before and worked my way back in. I took all the little trees from the clearing part and worked my way all the way back. So I kept dropping the trees this way. I made an alley. And I just kept dropping the trees over each other like this. All the way down. All the way down. And if I actually... I didn't even record us chopping the trees up mostly. But we that took days. Because I didn't just... Here's the other thing. Uh, she or Sunshine said, yes, please get rid of it. At Vision Preparedness, I don't want any of y'all hurt. I actually... Like, oh, right. The, the, the tree. I'm dropping trees... And here's the other part about dropping them trees. When you, got, when you got that land, when you finally get that land, dropping the tree, oh, you're going to praise the father. You hear me? You're going to praise him because, number one, you just took one of his trees out. Number two, that nobody got hurt. Um, I was going to take my praises out. My wife said, leave that in there because that's just going to bless the video. As soon as the video come on. I'm I'm just so elated that nobody got hurt. The tree did exactly what I wanted it to do. Everything. But it's like playing pool. Have anybody ever played pool? You got to look up. First check your safety and then hit that trajectory. You want to see which way you want this to go. You can steer this tree just like a car. Uh, J3GS says, um, when you in the working zone videos, uh, when working zone videos are the last thing on your mind. Amen. Man, I, I cleared all this and ain't even got no really too much record of it.
You are right about that. Uh, Strawberry32 says, would, would have loved to have seen you clear it out the alleyway. Um, I got videos and it's little pieces and portions, but just the whole thing, that video, the, the video that I have of just, just, I got the camera just sitting there recording and I think it's like 30 minutes long. That'll drive most people crazy. Just sitting there watching us walk around, moving wood, chopping down trees. This whole alley was full of trees, dropped. The whole thing. Most people will not want to see that. People like me, I will... I'm the kind of person which I'm into right now. I will sit and watch a man build a cabin in upstate Michigan. I will watch his three hour video from the minute he got the nails to the last minute he drinking coffee on the front porch of the cottage that he just built. That's just me though. I'm into that. When I'm into something like that and I, I, I see that vision and I'm on that journey, oh, shit. I will sit and watch that all night. Uh, Time-lapse videos. Yeah. Me, I don't even want to watch it time-lapsed. I want to hear the cutting of the wood. I want to see the angle of the blade. I want to see everything. I don't need it to speed up. I don't want it to go fast. I want to see the work. See, if I wanted it to go fast, I won't watch it at all. I will look and say, oh, this video is three hours. I ain't watching that. No, I want to see everything he does. If he took the time to keep moving this camera with every step he do, I want to watch that because in the future, I'm going to be taking them steps. I want to see I want to do that too, you know, that, that's some beautiful, it's a lost art, pieces of April say facts, we watched a couple of those videos yesterday, I love them, I don't care who build them, it's a woman named, it's not Lady in the Woods, that's the naked lady, I don't think it's her, I have to, I have to think about it, and I'm trying to remember the guy I always watch, mm, mm, I feel bad because I can't remember his name right off the bat. Cause he is he is off the he is off the chain with his game. He's practical. He ain't trying to impress you. He just like he gonna put this cabin up and it's gonna be solid and it's gonna be beautiful. And he don't use all this fancy crap. He don't use all of that. Um, hell, I'm gonna be honest with you. Somebody said this. Somebody said, led with all that, um, Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, uh, Coco Kerr. Thank you, Bush Radical. His name is Bush Radical. Yes, that's him. I was, I kept being like, it's something. Bushes, it's something. Yes, it's Bush Radical. And he, he ends every video with like, be radical, eh? That's him, Bush Radical. Go see him and his wife. And if you are not inspired by watching this man build cabins in the middle of nowhere on land that he bought for little or nothing, I don't think his girl in the woods, not the naked young, not the naked young girl, not, not her. It's a naked young girl. I ain't, I ain't interested in that. She just naked. That's the only reason people click on her, her channel anyway. It's a naked chick. And I think her name is girl in the woods. I could be wrong. Forgive me if I am, but. Um, no, go to, listen, go to Bush Radical's channel and you'll see his wife. She has her own channel. Then you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, are your other children going to clear a spot on the land sooner or later? Listen, this, I'm going to show you something. That's a very good question. Absolutely. This is, this is where my, where my truck is is where my daughter cabin is going to sit in this area. Now, this is the road. This roadway, you can't see it because you don't know what you're looking at. But this is just a road and it's going to whip around this way and go all the way back to my son's park. So, yes, 
we're going to start working on that probably in the spring before the before the leaves get back on or winter before the leaves get back on start clearing that path to make our way back to his part so yeah so this i'm gonna just show you how this how this work you can see this better now see now that i've been back there back and forth you kind of know where i'm going see this i'm not even all the way out yet but how that turn wait yeah how that turns around that corner right there my truck that's the road that's going to lead back to my my two sons part questions what's up brother lawrence i see j3gs uh hollering at you if there is an eagle nest is it illegal to cut it cut that tree down i don't know i i don't even want to get into that that's go look up the laws i guess i don't know are you building or getting a prefab um we're getting a prefab but it's it's just temporary. Everything right now is just so temporary, and we are not rushing anything. Um, this is the other part about that. I'm glad you said that. Don't rush. Don't rush. When I when I first started coming out on the land, I was rushing everything. Up, oh, resilient dad. I was just about to read that. Then I was like, why am I rushing? It's bought and paid for. Right? Why am I rushing? Why am I rushing? I better clean that up for YouTube. Why am I rushing? <laughs> you can't. The way things is these days. Uh, Say, so have you seen Northern Seclusion Channel? Same vibes. I think I have. I think I have, Brazilian Dad. That sounds familiar. I think I have. But this, man, this, this is the, this is the bomb right here. This is the bomb. It just feel good that I'm able to actually drive my truck down here where just last week you could barely walk through here. Let me see. Uh says i want to take advantage of the va farm agriculture opportunities but i feel like i'm getting too old to run a farm do you have any children do you have any family members because i stated this before age ain't nothing but a number listen i'm 50. i i know i know how this work you know it's time it's gonna be time to blow out the candles right uh you got nothing but time bro that's right vision preparedness nothing but time you know i know it's gonna be time to blow out the candles you know i didn't start this in my youth i'm not doing it for me i'm doing it to to enjoy my my last days on earth that's why i'm doing it i'm doing it to enjoy peace and tranquility we're on my last days on this earth that's what i'm doing it for but the main reason is i'm doing it for them i'm doing it for them and everybody keeps saying i think i'm too old i think i'm too old you may be too old for you to live out that full dream but you know what i'm gonna I'm going to slide off into something just a little different, but stick with me. I ain't going to make it all crazy like one of my rant videos, but I just want to, I want to just tell you something. As I live and I get older, I just got through telling a friend of mine this last night. We've just been doing everything all wrong. We've been doing everything all wrong. You want to know what I mean by that? I mean, when your kid turns 16, what's the first thing you want them to do? 
Everybody, everybody says this. Soon as your son or your daughter turns 16, you want them to go get a job. Don't you? I'm guilty of that too. Everybody, as soon as your child turns old enough to get their work permit, you want them to go get a freaking job. And why do you want to why do you want them to go get a job so it can teach them some morals, teach them some responsibility, teach them some ethics. You want them to earn their way. You want them to earn their way in this life in this society, right? That's what we've been taught for generations. A good man got a good job. That's what we've been taught for generations. We've been doing it all wrong. We've been doing it all wrong. And this is what I mean by that. Now, I'm, I'm guilty of that myself. We should have been working on ourselves and purchasing some land because let me back up when we tell our kids you old enough get out and get a job you know we're telling that kid go be a slave like i have been all these years when your child turns 16 and you go make them go get a job all of us if you're a parent all of us we're still in the slave game. We're still in, we're still working. So we're not even showing the kid what is the benefits of this? Because you all old and gray, hunched over, you just missed the doctor's appointment because you, you want me to go turn into you? We want our kids to go get a job. So they can be like us, but we ain't even right. <laughs> but it's built in the system for us to keep telling our kid, go out and get a job. What we telling them is go work for him. We ain't, did you hear what I said? Go work for them. Go work for him. Right? Think about that. If we did I, what we're supposed to do instead of buying the big pickup truck with the big wheels and the rims and the music and buying all the big fancy brick house instead of that if we purchase the damn land number one we can even start taking it easy and don't got to do double times and triple and overtime because i'm not the one but then when our kids get old enough Look, what their job is really supposed to be is go out there and clear that, that acre I gave you out there. Go clear that part of the land off. Go put your, your mobile home or your little uh, cabin over there. And now you start working on whatever is your passion, your craft, your art. What did you want to do? Oh, you wanted to learn how to weld. So, okay, think about this. If we start them off like that, where they ain't got to worry about the roof over their head and worrying about money and, and, and rent and mortgage. If they start out the gate running like that, without, as soon as they get out the house, the first thing they is worried about is getting put out, rent, mortgage, car note, insurance, all of this. Soon as the kid, the kid ain't done growing his beard and his pubes yet. And we sitting here, and now he in debt. Soon as he walk off your front porch, he's in debt. What kind of man is that going to make in the long run? One just like me and one just like you. One is always like this, like, mm, I got to figure out how I'm going to pull that off. And all of us say it. I don't care how slick you is financially, every blue moon, you be like, mm, I got to figure out how I'm going to pull that one off. You know it, now. you know I ain't lying. If we all sacrificed our time like that age, you ain't getting too old to purchase no land because maybe it's not meant for you. It's meant for that next generation so they don't have to fall into that same damn circus wheel that we've been doing for generations. My daughter, listen, I told my baby. She was doing something that she didn't like doing and it was stressing her out. I told her, let it go. 
You got solar. You got water. You got everything you need. You got food. You got refrigeration. And you got shelter. You on my land. You don't owe nobody nothing, baby. I said, yes, it's rough. Yes, it's sticky. It's sweaty. We got to start thinking what we're going to do with the poop and the pee and all of that. But imagine if your only if your only thought is of the day, not how you're going to pay the rent to this month and you late behind on the rent. If your only thought is how am I going to keep disposing of my own waste or how am I going to get rid of this trash that can't be recycled? That's the only thought you got when you wake up. How am I? I need to get up, wash my clothes, hang them on the line, dry them in the wind. We've been doing it wrong. We've been doing it wrong. Can you use shipping containers as a living space? That just depends on where you live. If y'all laws allow it, I mean, knock yourself out. So that was just my little take on you're not too old because it may not be for you. It's that head start for them. Now, my baby boy, little Led, he wants to go to college. He wants to go off and go to school. That's great. But you know what's sweet? If the world ends up being too much for him, he got somewhere to go. He can come back home and say, you know what? The world is too big for me. This is good right here. All I need is my cabin. Got met me a little wife. Raised some kids back here. And son, you got daddy got solar up the yin yang. You got, we got running water. Uh, streams all throughout our land. We got fresh water. When I get this well put in, uh, me and the kids today was looking at where we gonna put our, a pump well because we found water. Messing around and found water. So my son-in-law gonna help me dig the damn uh, uh, hand well. So we got water. We got solar. We got wood. We got fire. We got food. Deer, deer set. I got perimeter I got a perimeter alarm around the whole acreage, right? Around the whole thing. And the perimeter go off for a mile. And then I have a, a I can't, I, my brain is so hot. Hunting, hunting cameras, deer cams. I got deer cams around the acreage, right? Let me tell you something. It's so many, it's so many turkeys and deer around here. I had to cut the alarm off. I cut the alarm off because it was getting on my dang on nerves. Uh, when you took down the trees, did you also pull up the roots and the stumps? Nope, and I'm gonna tell you why. I cut the stumps flush. I, I cut the stumps flush to the ground, see them? Flush to the ground. I'm gonna tell you why I did that. Because we're not, this not gonna be a yard. This is land. There's not gonna be grass and yard, none of that. Each one of these stumps, when I cover this up with this composted soil, each one of these stumps gonna disappear. I trust me on this. I've done this before. This ain't nothing I'm guessing, I know. People keep saying, well, they're going to grow back. They might. When they, when they come up and grow like this, you just chop them back down. Everybody keep thinking when you grind your stump down that you just got rid of the stump. No, you did not. That stump grinder dude just grinded it down. I, a real professional one with the big old um, screwdriver thing on the back of that boom truck. Now that's the real stump remover dude or the one that dig it out. Um, so will you, it will break down in the compost. Absolutely. You know my house where I live now? I mean, listen, in that backyard by the lake used to look like this. Do you ever see me tripping over a, 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 a stump? No, cause they gone. Every now and then when I'm digging, I dig up some old rotten stump that's just rotten, just soaked wood. No, 
when you hire a, a stump grinder, you only grinding it down flush. You know how far these pine tree um, roots go out? That you would be here for weeks trying to get every bit of it or dig it out. You need a backhoe to come dig that root out. I don't waste my time. I've done this at two different homesteads, and I don't even waste my time with that. I, I stump grinded. Had two stumps grinded in my lifetime. And I paid that dude about two, about $150 or so each time, something like that. Wasted my time. Wasted my time. When I seen what he did, I was like, that's it? Yep, that's it. Ain't you? I'm thinking, ain't you going to get, like, dig it up? No. Ain't you going to grind even grind it down further? No, that's good. So when I'm on my lawnmower and I'm riding, I do the do. Down in that damn pit, it's, the stump is still down there. So I finally did what I normally do. Went back, dug around it, cut it flush, put screwdriver holes in, take my drill, take my drill, drill holes down in it all the way through it, or take my chainsaw and make it in a checkerboard. That thing will be gone in a year. Trust me, you just try it yourself. You ain't got to believe me. Just try it yourself. Put a checkerboard pattern, and I don't care how big that stump is. Put a checkerboard pattern. Uh, J3 GS Farm said, I rented that stump grinder and it and did it myself. But you know how long it takes to get everything. You got to get everything. That's root go down about two or three feet deep, and it's about damn five feet in circumference. You For one tree, you'll be there all day. But like I said, I didn't I didn't want to come in and uh go off like I normally do. I just wanted to show we we did it and we've been doing it wrong. In my opinion. In my own opinion. I think before they make it so we we can't buy land anymore cuz you can see them doing it right now. You can see them doing it. It's not a conspiracy theory. They are making it so we cannot buy land. They're buying it all up and then leasing it back out to us. They're buying up all the land, all the big people, all the rich people buying up all the land, and then they let us rent or they let us lease. Before this goes full-fledged because this it's in fast motion, before it goes all the way where nobody can own anything, you might want to go get you a little little parcel somewhere. It ain't got to be 10 and 20 acres. It could be two acres. It could be one. Uh, uh, vision preparedness say it works. The drill holes. I'm telling you, I'll do it every time, brother. Um, What are your... Uh, Strobe says, what are your thoughts on buying land with two friends? Friend for 35 years. If you want to continue your friendship... My opinion, mine, not yours, my opinion. If you want to continue being friends for another 35 years, don't do it. You asked me for my opinion, and that's my opinion. Everybody keep wanting to start these communities with their friends and their family members. And they all want to chip in. Let me let me put it to you like this. Say, say you go and you buy 10 acres. You bought 10 acres. You go half with your buddy. He put in a hundred thousand, you put in a hundred thousand. Right? Uh, let me see something. I missed something. Hey, everything fresh and sassy. I need to talk to you. <laughs> Lady Led told me something like, what? We, we'll talk. We'll talk. But your buddy put in 100000 You put in 100000 Here's the question right here. What part is his? What part is yours? Do you get to side with all the water? Do, do you get to side with the stream down the back? Or do he get to side with the stream down the back? Do you... Do you get the side to get all the sun? Or do he get the side to get all the sun? Do you get the side to got all the beautiful, lush fruit trees? Or do he? 
telling you, it's more to it than people keep on. I know we keep hearing about that kind of stuff on social media and on television. It's more to it than that. It's so much more. You ever see the odd couple back in the day? Some of y'all probably ain't that old. The odd couple was a, a TV show, and it was all they was always arguing because one dude was sedity with his pinky out, one dude was kind of thugged out, right? And they was roommates. They just never saw eye to eye on anything. And they, one day, they, I think this was on different strokes too. They put a piece of tape down the middle of their bedroom. Like that side is yours. This side is mine. His side had all the light socket plugs. His side had the, the doorway to get out the damn room. His side had a window where he could catch a cool breeze. His side, you get what I'm saying? And all through the night, they arguing about, you got all the good stuff, but you got all the good stuff. Don't do it. You asked me for my opinion, I gave it to you. Why not just purchase your own land near friends? There you go. There you go. That's my own opinion, and I'm sticking to it. I keep hearing about all these different families coming together and purchasing land and doing this together. The part they ain't telling you is some is some some ish going on in that, and do we don't get a chance to hear because don't nobody want to tarnish, don't nobody want to tarnish the good deed that was done by our people purchasing land together. But it's it's some drama back there. I'm telling you, it could be a whole TV show. I bet. I'll even bet you it's going to end up being a TV show, and it's going to be like Atlanta Housewives. You'll see. It's coming. <laughs> All the fighting and bickering going on in between it. But family, yeah, I, th I think we just been doing it wrong. That's all. Look at this. Show. this the owls is coming out. The owls is starting to come out. Uh, Rucker Holmes says that don't do it. Uh, it's hard enough with just your own family. Oh, my God. Let, okay. Just, just to prove a point. <laughs> just to prove a point, like, like Rucker Holmes did. Just, it's hard enough with your own family. Now that my daughter is here, it's stuff I'm telling her. I don't, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. But she said, I thought this was mine. I'm like, it is. <laughs> but she don't understand. And I have to explain why you shouldn't do that. See, I'm dealing with that myself. Like for instance, for instance, when she first came out, she didn't realize she's new, uh, she's new with solar power. And she kept needing to charge. She said, can I use your gas generator to charge my generator? I said, for what? Oh, my generator is, is out of juice. You got a 2,000 watt EcoFlow. How the hell did you use 2,000 watts in one night? Well, I had to dry my hair. <laughs> 2,000 watts? A hair dryer take about 900 to 1,000 watts. And she got all natural black hair. I'm like, man, you better you better figure out another way to do that. You're going to have to figure out something else for that. Okay? Because, nah, that is the energy you also need to survive out here. Not make your hair pretty. That pretty hair business, you ain't, you ain't there yet. You ain't ready for that yet. Okay? You talk to your mama after you done got some practice in on out here living and then not then ask your mom how she keep her hair so crispy out here in the middle of nowhere you ain't there yet so how many people uh, give me some questions before i go i keep saying questions i'm gonna stop questions pieces of april said princess leg gonna have to let it air dry she gonna have to do something i'm gonna get her a fist with the the a pick with the fist on it and just pick it out and just kick your head back, you know, lean back. Because you can't keep doing that. Using up all your survival. She's like, we ain't got no way to cook. This is what I've been forcing them to do. And this and 
please excuse my, my language. I call it eat the shit. <laughs> Did y'all hear that? Y'all probably couldn't with this phone. It's, it's time for me to go because it's dusk and people starting to pop them deer. Pe it's dusk and people starting to pop them deer. I need to put, hold on a second. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even playing. <laughs> I'm not even playing. Yeah, y'all heard the gunfire. That's them 12 gauges popping off. Um, but yeah, she she's learning now. Like she keeps saying, Dad, we all out of propane. I just gave you a 20 pound tank. How the hell is you out of propane? <laughs> oh, well, we was cooking and then we was... You can't be using a 20 pound tank of propane in one day. You can't do that. Your propane is your backup. I'm chopping up all this MF and wood because that's what you cook with first. You cook with that. Okay? Outside. In the meantime, if it's too cold, it's raining out, you can't get the wood started, that's when you use your propane. You don't waste your propane. Your propane is your last line of defense for anything. To keep warm, you put on blankets. You got, I got her that wood stove. I'm going to show you all the wood stove to keep heated because we don't just use propane. Uh, she is sunshine. Lady, uh, Led with Princess Led, get that home you showed, showed up. No, 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 no. Y'all, y'all, gonna, you're going to see. You're going to see. We starting from the ground up. Uh, let me see. I bought five acres. I'm in the middle of getting it clear, but don't know if I should do it myself or pay the 4,500 to do one acre. What do you think? You ask her for my opinion again. This is my opinion. My opinion. How much time... hear that how much time do you got if you got time on your hands i would try to do it myself if you don't know what you're doing i would pay somebody if you got the money i would just go ahead and pay somebody because time is money it's a lot of different factors to that if it was me all of those factors count if i don't have time and i need this cleared right now i would just go ahead and pay the money if i had the money if i don't have the money and i gotta borrow from a bank hell no i'm gonna cut each one of these trees down one step at a time so it's a lot of angles to that question. Uh, do you already have power lines out there? No. <laughs> no. We have solar. We're running solar. Um, I'm new to this. Is it common to own all the rights? Uh, uh, yes, you should. It's a good idea to. How's my fruit trees doing? I don't know. They way over there somewhere. Right now, I got other stuff on my mind. I ain't going to lie to you. Half of them, they all looked alive last time I seen them. I just ain't got time for that right this minute. It's You see what I'm doing. I ain't said a word about gardening. Listen, I can't make this up. In my truck, in the passenger seat, I have a whole passenger seat. and and I'm sorry, the back seat, passenger seat. The floor and the back seat is full of vegetables that I need to plant. I just ain't had time. They are in there. Oh, I could show you right now. I can't make this up. They've been in there for over a week. I can't make this up. I can't make this up. You see what they starting to look like. So I ain't gonna lie to you. That's the last thing on my mind at this very moment. I know I need to get it done, but her house is coming any day now her house is coming any day now and i can't i could i can't be my problems can't gotta be put off on the back burner uh resilient dad led have you looked at the glass raven 4g trail camera i have one and it's a decent one have sd cards can you see it on your cell phone that's what i want to know if you can see it on your cell phone i want to know i don't want the ones. i got the ones where you got to go and check 
everyone. I'm not. That's cute if you don't have much area <laughs> to watch. When you got acres, going to check each and every trail cam every day is ridiculous. So if it can take a cell, if it send me a signal on my cell phone, a picture on my cell phone, I'm with it. I'm ready to just pay the money to get one of those. Oh, it does good. Yes, I want to know all about it, man. Please. Uh, speaking of rights, you you own the air rights and to your place. Could you shoot down a drone if it invades? Well, you can't shoot down another person's private property no matter what. No matter what, you can't. I mean, they can. You can shoot it down, and you they're gonna sue you. And then you got another problem. You shooting up in the air, that's gonna be a problem too. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think you'd be shooting down no drones. Uh, do you plan to have power lines installed eventually, or going? To, I'm going. I'm. Let me put it to you like this. I'm not gonna say yes. I'm not gonna say no. Right now. My main concern is to live as free as possible. If I am forced to have power lines and all of that, then yes. But that's the furthest thing from my mind. I got solar that we run every day and that's what we use. And it does just great. Even in the winter when the sun ain't up as long, we done moved the solar panels. Um... And everything just you just got to be more conservative on how much power you use like instead of me using my coffee maker i just go ahead and make me some cowboy coffee straight in the pot water water coffee grounds in the pot and, and over wood fire i don't even i don't even you know you gotta use your head out here um let me see Okay, I ain't gonna keep y'all too much. Oh, how do you get right of waste out? Get rid of the waste out there. The the you talking about the the poop and the pee? The pee is nothing. I pour the pee in my uh, plants and in my trees. The poop, you dig a hole and put it in. I got a hole right now that we filling up right now. Fill it up, then fill it up. We just keep doing that. And if you think about it, literally, you know, when I, a, a camping percolator, I got one. It's just, yeah, that just take two. That's, I'd rather just go ahead and put the grounds in the car. I got, a, I got two percolators and it's just better for me to throw the grounds in the coffee and just, it tastes better too. I ain't gonna lie to you. It just tastes better. Matter of fact, percolated coffee and cowboy coffee tastes better than you using the best coffee machine you can get. Hey, Roz, how you doing? I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I'd rather just do it that way. Uh, Vision, Vision, you asked me a question earlier and I seen it and I meant to come back to it. What was it? Vision preparedness, if, if you're still in here, there you go. You asked me a question earlier, what was it? Something about a live stream. Uh, Cherry says, Led, do you think it would do Princess Led some good to hang an orange flag once she moves on the land? No. 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 No, for the hunters, no. Because see... Right now, as far as I know, I'm not having anybody try to encroach on my property, no poachers, so far that I know. Checking all my cameras and stuff, so far, nothing. You know? So, at this moment, that ain't gonna help one way or the other. What are some good campsites for family starting camping? Don't have an RV. We are in Alabama. I have no idea. If y'all got a KOA campground, just go to one of them, I guess, which is one of the freaking worst. But 
You got to start somewhere. No, start in your backyard. Just go in your backyard and set up a tent. There you go. That's how I have everybody do. Go in your backyard, set up a tent, stay out there for three days, see how you like it. Okay? Some people spend too much money and leave on the same day they set the tent up at the campground. Go in your yard. That's right. Uh, let me see. Van Life says, help me. What solar generator do you prefer than Jackery? I bought 300. I bought 300. Didn't have enough power for my blender. I need to know exactly everything you're doing before, before I go telling you what is a good, maybe a good thing for your situation. Oh, Vision said, can we do a live topic? We've been doing it wrong. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's want to do it. Let's. Let's do a, a, a mashup. You down? I'm totally down if you down. Because I got a feeling, I got a feeling that everybody gonna want to tap in on that one. Cause I, I got a I got a lot to say, but it'd be better if other people get a chance to say it too. You know what I'm saying? Uh will you have a live of the house being off grid that's what that's why i've been putting out so many videos because the house is gonna come any the house was supposed to be here friday right the house was supposed to be here friday so i was like, like let me hurry up and get these videos out because i i can't show the house video without showing this stuff so everybody was like damn lad let's god let let this go we tired of seeing the woods but I put those videos for the people that really wanted to see them because the, the last step now is the house being prepared. Vision, I'm going to talk to you, okay? We're going to talk. Matter of fact, um, email me at... Uh, don't do that. E yes, do. Email me at lairfarmer73 at yahoo.com. I'm going to try my hardest to keep my eye out for you. <laughs> She and Sunshine said, not tired of seeing the woods. You'll be surprised how many people are. Some people is tired of seeing this. And it's just, I need to get up and leave. But really, I also feel like setting up a tent. Let me, can I show y'all something? Can I show y'all why we picked this spot? Let me show you. We picked this spot because watch this. As we walk back here, she said, Dad, this is it. This is why in that video, she put her flag down. She said, "This is I want this to be my backyard. They've been chopping all this stuff down, these little trees, because this is her backyard. This is my baby's backyard. And she just cleared. I told her, don't chop down no big trees clear all the little ones so this is going to be her backyard and down here i know this is hard and i'm probably buffering but down here further you see this hill i'm gonna take you all a little ways okay i hope my internet don't go off down this hill you can see can y'all see down that hill down there? That's my stream. And it runs, my land go way back there by about another three acres. That way. And the water comes and whips around here, whips around, whips around. You can see where the trees are separated. That's the stream. Whips around, goes down this valley goes all the way around that side it splits and goes that way around the other side all these all these veins so she said dad i want this to be my backyard because this is the bomb and as you can see there go the truck that's where her house gonna be and we gotta i gotta come and cut this tree down Cause it's dangerous let me show you see this there's another one that i'm gonna drop see this one right here i was supposed that's marked i was supposed to get that and i'm gonna drop it straight down that way it's gonna just crash down on them little trees that ain't gonna be no big deal 
but just just for safety just for safety so I'm gonna go back up here and if y'all got any questions so this um, this is going out to pieces of April if y'all haven't went over to pieces of April's channel this is the sec other half of African dreaming this is Jay's wife please go over to her channel and check our little sister out and give her some support show her some love and the reason I'm saying this is going out to African dreaming pieces of April team J April is going out to y'all because y'all on y'all way back and y'all gonna do this uh oh who did this Thank you, TX Lala. Thank you, says some people like to fast forward to the end. Thanks for sharing the, the uh, process and journey. Thank you. Because I get it. People want that stimulation. Stimulation. Stim <laughs> stimulation. They want that stimulation. This, the normally I do those type of videos. This ain't that. This is... This is not a product review. You are witnessing. You are witnessing real life. You are witnessing a real piece of my life, our life. I'm letting you in to our family. Normally I would keep stuff like this private. The only reason I'm not making it private is because over the years, all the people that have inspired me to do all the things I do is usually because you're around people that's doing great things. You're around people doing great things. But now with social media, you don't have to be the lucky one that just happened to have that one uncle that had some land with some horses. You don't have to do have you don't have to be that kid no more. You know, like his uncle got horses. Dang, for real? Man, that's crazy. I would love to have. You don't gotta do that no more. Now with social media, you can have the uncle with the land right here. People call me Uncle Led now, you know? And you can get that experience and you can go on that journey and you can feel that feeling. I wanted to share this with everybody because I don't want to get a, I don't want to get all soggy in the tear duct. But I wanted to share this with everybody. Because, like I stated earlier in the video, I think we've just been doing it wrong. I just have you have you ever been trying to put something together, put a piece of furniture together, and you got an extra piece? You like, damn, where do this piece go? We got about four of them. Where did this go? You putting the kids' bunk beds together or something, right? I got about six extra screws. You don't want your kids to lay up in a bunk bed, and you don't know where these extra Four bolts go. Come on, let's stick with me. You got four bolts. And the instructions don't say that you got four extra bolts. So these four extra bolts go in this bunk bed set somewhere. You know in your heart of hearts, you did something wrong. And you're going to have to correct it before somebody gets hurt. You don't want your babies to get up in a bunk bed set and it's missing four bolts and you don't know where they belong. Well, family, that's kind of how I feel. I feel like we've been put this whole system that we doing, I think we put it all together all wrong. And I finally flipped the doggone instructions over and turned them right side up. I was reading them in Spanish, Espanol on the other side, but now they in English for me, right? I'm like, oh my God, I missed all the important parts. And what I mean by all of this is, this is the land. I'm sharing my journey because I think we've all been putting this system together wrong and it's going to be wrong and somebody going to get hurt if we keep doing it like this. 
It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. We all keep failing. I ain't gonna say failing. Oh, let me put that back on. I ain't gonna say failing. I'm gonna say struggling. I don't care how financially stable you are, we all be struggling. We all wish we had a little bit more money. We all wish we had a few more items. That's because this system is set up just to give you just enough, just enough. It's not set up for you to just sit back and enjoy the day, enjoy the sunshine, enjoy the air. It's the system don't want you to do that. And I think if you watch any of these videos of mine or any other content creator in this in this uh family the inspiration should make you be like lead ain't got no sense if he can do it i can do that i know lead ain't all the way wrapped too tight <laughs> if he can do it i can do it i don't know you're gonna have to google that uh 20 block let me tell y'all this can I tell you something? As of, what is this? This October, it's about to be, October about to be over, it's about to be November. As of August, the end of August, I had retired myself for two years this past August. I haven't worked at the post office in almost three years but i signed the paperwork that i'm finished two years ago ain't that something and now i've been putting my foot my best foot forward because i don't ever want to punch another man's clock again i don't ever want to get to the point where i need to say you know, you know this. Welcome to Walmart. I ain't knocking nobody to do it. Welcome to Walmart. I'm not knocking nobody to do work. But now that I see how this whole thing work, I don't ever want to be back in the middle of that. Okay, to me, to me, Going back to work in the system. Going back to work in the system to me is like going back to an abusive relationship. You know she gonna be yelling at you. You know she just like to fight. You know she like to argue. You know she like to scratch your face. You know she like to throw stuff. You know she like to pour bleach on your clothes. You know she like to bust your windshields and windows out and your headlights out. You know She's going to accuse you of cheating just because you asked the doggone waitress for more mustard. You know. Why the hell? Just because she cute? Just because she got a fatty? You want to go back to all of that misery. Oh, you know she's going to call the police on you, get you arrested and lie on you. And you're going to end up in jail till they figure out she was lying. You want to go and go through all of that. Ladies, I'm sorry. I had to do it from our side. Okay, because I always use the ladies' side. The men get abused, too. Okay? Uh-huh. Equality. But you want to go back to that abusive relationship just because she cute, just because she got a fatty, just because she make a good plate of lasagna. But the rest, is it worth it? That's the same thing that abusive relationship with the system that they set up for us is no different. Think about it. Oh, you'll make a lot of money at the right job. You'll make a lot of money going to get your job back. But look what it cost you. Hey, hey, uh, Led, we're going to need you to run over here and go help that guy. And But, sir, I done did my job. I'm going to be, I'm gonna end up being out here at 10 o'clock at night. Well, look, uh, I, you know, I don't make the rules. Go over there and help such and such. Go help Johnson and this and that. Uh, tomorrow, everybody prepare for an extra four hours because of this event going on. So everybody get ready for four hours overtime. Go home, tell your families that y'all going to be here an uh, extra four hours tomorrow. 
And then after all of that, after all of that work that you put in and they driving you like a freaking mule, you get the paycheck and you be thinking like this. Well, they worked the hell out of me, but at least I'm going to have a nice check. You get the check and you just broke the tax bracket into the next level where they took everything that you worked extra in taxes. So you end up, and everybody knows this because I've done this many a days and been pissed off. All the overtime you end up putting in since you broke the tax bracket um, level, the money that you just made went into taxes and you end up, even though you worked an extra 10 or 15 hours overtime, you still only made 10 or $20 more than you normally make on a normal day, on a normal work week. Because you you went surpassed that tax bracket. So what they look at it as, once you break that tax bracket, you need to make way more money to actually recoup some of your blood, sweat, and tears. I don't want no parts of that bullshit. I don't want no parts of that life. I don't want no part of that system. How you gonna tax me at work for working for you? Then turn around and tax me for the food that I'm buying from you. Then tax me on top of the taxes and at the end of the year to pay taxes. Get, get, get out of here. Get, man. I don't want no parts to that. I don't want no parts to it. And that's what that's what we fighting for. All we're doing is passing back the Vaseline. Here you go. Use that this time, please. <laughs> you almost killed me the last time. Take it easy. Take it easy. We're just passing back the Vaseline. When you go to work voluntarily like that and you have no ambitions on doing anything to get out of this freaking rat race. Thank you, Daisy girl. Thank you for that. When you like, ah, go to go to work, do this. You know they're gonna make me a foreman next week. Here, uh, uh, that's enough for that Vaseline. I broke out. Use this cocoa butter. Use that cocoa butter, man. Please, and take it easy. Take it easy. That's what we do when we voluntarily just keep moving forward in the system like this. We giving them the Vaseline. We're giving them the permission, you know? That's like you going into prison and you the one screaming, fresh fish, fresh fish, fresh, fresh fish, fresh fish, fresh fish, anybody? You, instead of you coming in, they clanging on the bar like, yeah, fresh fish. No, it's you. You come in fresh fish, fresh fish, anybody? Fresh fish? No, you, yeah, no. You, you volunteering your, you volunteering your safety. <laughs> I'm sorry. But that's what we do. I don't want no parts to that, man. I bought this. I live in a doghouse on this right now. I don't care. I live in the back of this trailer. I ain't lying to you. I live in this. I park that somewhere and put a little porch off of that some bitch and just call it a day. I'm good, man. I don't want. I really am over. And, and want to hear something? I ain't gonna lie to you. This is gross. This is gross to people that don't have a clue about what we do out here vision preparedness might know <laughs> i've acquired a liking to pooping in in the bucket i just i just have when i go back to town i literally have a hard time sitting on a toilet knowing I'm about to waste about five gallons of water that I wish I had to drink when I was out here. You gonna let out your little poop ball and your four, eight ounces of pee, and you gonna flush that down with five gallons of freaking water, fresh water. I have a heart, I've messed my head up. I've been out here so long, 
I have a hard time. I sit in there and I stare at that dog on that toilet like this. This is wrong. This, this ain't right. I'm going to tell you something else and I can't make this up. I'll go prove it to you in a heartbeat. You know what I've been doing? If I have to go back to the house, I won't even. This is for the people that's all sensitive. You might want to close your ears. I won't even use the toilet. I feel guilty for using the toilet. I got one of them urinals I brought home from the hospital when I had surgery. <laughs> I fill that boy up. And then I go pour it out there under my, my uh, persimmon tree at the at back of the house. I can't stand it, man. It it turns my stomach now to think how I wish I had this five gallons the other day. I'm out here purifying rainwater, trying to drink and eat and wash up out of this one gallon of water that I just got out of the rain, the rain collection system. But here I am flushing one turd with about three to five gallons of water. Again, before I leave, we've been doing this all wrong. Did you hear what I said? We waste three to five gallons of water every time you flush the toilet. To take your turds and your urine to a water treatment plant. To filter it. Clean it, they say. And give it back to you to drink. Everybody is okay with that. Now, pee and poop ain't the only thing that goes down that toilet. You got people using drugs and people like to get rid of their medications and their prescriptions down the toilet. And then you might have, you know, a couple of banditos or something, <laughs> you know, a couple of Nino Browns. What? Hey, it's cops. It's the feds. It's the feds. It's the feds, son. No, get, get rid of it. Get rid of it. What you think they do on any TV show? Any TV show you want. What do they do? They at the door, son. <laughs> the feds, the feds. What do you what do you do with it? You flush it down the toilet. I'm just, I only know from TV. So where do you think all that cocaine goes? Into the water treatment plant. Back to you. Now here's the new one. Now. The whole thing now is methamphetamines, right? And they busting all these labs and all these little secret houses and stuff, right? Oh my God, it's the cops! Where you think they flush in that, that them nuclear bombs that they in there making? Where do you think they flushing it? Down the toilet, water treatment plant, back to you. Don't you think We just doing this so backwards, man. Have you ever seen fresh running spring water? Or have you seen, right, somebody said a mop water vomit? You could go on. You, human blood, you can go on and on. I got a stream down there. And I know it's not safe to drink right out the stream, but that water is crystal freaking clear. I know you need to filter it, you need to clean it, you need to boil it, all of that. But it look... Brenda, thank you. It looks and smells better than what come out of my faucet. It looks, that water right down there looks and smells better. Uh, Catherine, <clears throat> you got a good question. Thanks, everybody, for telling me to put my helmet back on. Catherine said, 
Can't you just use your life straw? Let me tell you something why I don't trust none of that crap no more. I don't even trust the Berkey. I don't trust the Berkey. I don't trust life straws. I don't trust no products saying they clean water no more. You want to know why? That f they Did you see in the news that that family just had some life straws and they drank out of a, a, a creek and all of them passed away? Did you anybody else hear that? This was just a few weeks ago. How many people ever? This was national news. Did anybody else hear that? Life straw. They all had life. Go look it up. Go look it up. They found a family, the husband, the wife, and I, I want to say their two children. They had their two children with them. Um, they found them all down by the creek. Go, go Google it. Go look it up. It was a whole news report about, I could be, my time could be wrong, maybe a month to three weeks ago. It might be a little longer. Just go look it up. When I saw that report, I said, I just don't trust nothing anymore. You know, I, I'm, I believe in that doggone Berkey, but I just don't trust nobody because it's all a freaking money grab. People, it was it Sawyer? I don't know. It's either Life Straw or Sawyer. I don't know. Don't don't quote me on that. But it's one of those one of those ones you just drink out of. Uh, go look it. Go look it up. Go try Sawyer. Try Life Straw. It's one or the other. And that family died. I said I don't trust nothing no more. It's all about money. They don't care if you drink through this damn thing. That whole family, that man, his wife, and his two children are dead. Because of somebody, they didn't think about the quality control that it has to be in such a place that's supposed to save your life. They probably making people work overtime and got them working on the weekends through the holidays and every, through their birthdays and everything else. And you know when you working or Monday, you was off the weekend, now you back on Monday. Now you got to go in here and make some life, life uh, saving equipment and you ain't got that promotion they went over top of your head and gave the promotion to the new girl <laughs> and you making my stuff to save my family life y'all know y'all know I ain't lying cause we all do it we all come in Monday morning and be like that Take y'all with me here. There we go. <clears throat> My truck is loaded down with stuff. Before I get out of here, I at least want to say goodbye the right way. <clears throat> uh, I don't want to end up putting that news report up. No, I'm in the car now. Now, if they think a deer is driving a car, then you do got some sickos out here. All right. So, everybody, I'm going to get out of here. I'm sorry for keeping y'all so long again. I just wanted some... Uh, I just... Lid, what's your best chainsaw? I've had three. I got a... Um, I got a Ryobi. I have a Echo. No, no, I'm sorry. Husqvarna, and I got a steel, and I always use the steel. My Ryobi is here. My Husqvarna is at my house. That steel is a beast. It's a beast. Um, I got the steel Farm Boss. Farm Boss with an 18-inch bar on it. And uh, 316th 
inch blade. Where's the lead family? They're actually, they're actually on the entire other side of the land where I'm about to go right now. Uh, I would take y'all with me, but you don't want this. Y'all want to go with me? I, I got to do this secretively though, okay? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take you over there just to say hi to them, okay? But I gotta keep you I gotta keep you down here. I can't even let you see the I can't even let you see the sky really. I'm gonna keep you right here. There you go. That'll work. Sorry about this. We just I just want to take you over there to see uh, Prince's leg. I drove all the way back here now to drive all the way back. This is a long, this is longer than it looked, dog. On it. And I got my trailer on here. The truck driving skills coming back into play. Uh, Jay, Jay, Jay found out I used to be a truck driver. I used to drive for Falcon. And, uh, and I used to drive for Falcon in Toledo, Ohio. And I used to take loads all the way over to Windsor, Canada, and uh, Twin Bridge. Uh, and I used to drive for Dunkin' Donuts down in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm sorry, uh, 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 McDonough, Georgia. I used to drive for Dunkin' Donuts in McDonough, Georgia. And I took those loads regional to all parts of Florida, and I've been to Texas a couple times with a couple lows. I didn't like doing that, but all parts of Florida, especially Miami and Louisiana, North Carolina, South Carolina, all parts of Georgia. And sometimes I will run a load up to uh, Tennessee. And I did that for like, hmm, like five years, maybe a little more. I loved it. Just you better, you, you gotta be ready for that. If you wanna drive trucks, that ain't that ain't for the that ain't for the timid or the weak. Because that's a whole nother scam session right there. They try to scam you and make you do stuff that they pin you in and you end up doing stuff that you don't want to do. They'll tell you to take a load run a load just all we need you to do is take this load down to jacksonville florida okay jacksonville florida next we had somebody else pick that up i'm sorry about that but we'll pay back we'll pay you back so this is what we want you to do can you just go ahead and uh can you just go ahead and grab this um grab this load and take this load to uh just run this down to Miami and then bring it back. We'll pay you good. All right, man. I'm just trying to get back home. Okay, okay. Just pick up this load and come back. We want you to bobtail over there. Pick up this trailer. And then, man, you good to go. Come and bring it all the way back. You get there. What happened? They ain't done filling that trailer up. They ain't even loaded the trailer. You get down to Miami. And they, you sitting there. They're like, how long is it going to take you all to do? Oh, uh, you, you know, we kind of closed today. It's only two people here. And we got to load the trailer by ourselves. So it's going to take y'all eight hours to load the trailer. And I'm going to be sitting around here twiddling my thumbs. So now I got to sit here. Well, you, they, I called the dog on dispatcher and tell him what happened. Well, go ahead and take that one. Go take trailer 7091 and run that over to uh, Louisiana. Next thing you know, it all start over again. You, if They jack you around so much. If you ain't careful, you will literally be on the road for weeks which was supposed to only take you three days to do this run was only supposed to take you two or three days you it ended up taking you two or three damn weeks just to get back home and then when you finally get back home the company and the dispatcher is mad at you because they screwed you like you you finally got to do stuff and say stuff like i'm not taking jack i'm going home well can you at least grab on your way back, can you at least? I'm not doing nothing. I'm going home. So when you finally go home, 
because you pissed off because they've been screwing you over. They mad at you like you did them wrong. So it's a blessing and a curse. The money is there, but the games just don't stop when it comes to that. The games don't stop when it comes to truck driving. Matter of fact, that's one of the most ruthless mind screws, lack of better words, can't say what I really want to say, mind humps that I've ever had driving trucks. They, they screw your brains up and try to trick you like the Jedi mind trick all the time to the point it's just ridiculous if anybody ever knew anybody that drove trucks or you're one yourself you know god is right on time when i'm telling you the truth you know i ain't said not nan lie just now and ain't nothing changed after all these years because i got family members just truck drivers now and they be telling me these same stories that i done been through and lived through and i was like well that's why i let that go so, yeah, that's that. <clears throat> it's so bad. When I moved to South Carolina uh, 15 years ago or whatever it's been, I literally let my I let my um, CDL go. And it's so it's so they need truck drivers so bad that they, they saying, like, if you ever had a CDL, you can get it back. You ain't even got to take no test. And I was like, nope, I'm good. All right. Now I can take y'all. I can take y'all with me. Hold on. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Okay. Come on. Take you with me. It's my driveway. This is my driveway. I'm on the other side. I'm a mile away. This is my driveway. This is what I come home to. Led Family 73. I'm going to just drive y'all back here real quick. I don't want to hit none of my chickens. I, I love being able to let them run free again. I love my chickens being free. Like, she just really need to move unless she got a death wish. Oh, I don't know where they at. There go they wood, though. You see that? Let me see. That's they wagon full of wood right there. beehive still my bees still pumping the hen and tentry on point they going in for the night i don't know where the crew at we're gonna come and just turn around i'm about to drop this big tree here i'll show you that in a minute this the, this the part that y'all wasn't really legal i couldn't legally show you before but now i can because it's mine And this is the path to lead all the way to their land over there. One day I'm going to show you all my field over there.
Oh my goodness. So I'm about to sit down so I can just let y'all. Oh, oh, can I show y'all something? I'm, I got a video I'm about to release because I ain't, I did all kind of stuff y'all ain't even seen. This is the, uh, this is our new outdoor kitchen. Uh, the kids helped me set it up. This is by Vivor. And this is why I, it's a it's a carport. It's a 12, 12 by 20 foot carport, 20 foot long. But I wanted to use it for an outdoor kitchen, which we was in here partying last night. So y'all got to excuse us. All my cooking gear is back there and EcoFlow setup is right here. Charging the batteries, everything. This is my whole EcoFlow. This is my power grid. This is the main power grid that runs the whole RV and runs everything. And we come out here, charge up our, charge up the radios, charge up the phones, charge up the extra batteries for all the drills and everything else. And washing station, cleaning the eggs and everything else. Cooking station, pulled out the table to sit and eat breakfast and dinner. So, it's so much more to it that I would love to show you. The warden is calling the girls back home. All right. Any questions? Because next week, next week I'm going to be showing y'all all of the products that I've been using. All of the products that, that they're using. All of the products that I've been using. Oh, listen to this. This is what I'm really going to show y'all. Uh, it's better I do it like this. Uh, here's my Camp Chef wood stove that we've been using. I bought another wood stove that's going to go in my cabin. I'm going to let her use this one. But this one is going to be in my cabin. My diesel heater and the old rocket stove. Y'all remember this video? That's still in. That's still in full effect. So we're gonna be using all of this stuff. She got my small wood stove over in a tent right now. Let me close this for something. Start mm -hmm. living in it. But let me grab a chair and bring y'all out here with me. So we've been stacking wood. And I will show y'all, I will show y'all this uh this wood splitter, but I'm gonna show you that in another video. Cause I ain't got it set up anyway. Beans and baloney. Any questions whatsoever? Uh suddenly I don't feel so bad having all my so bad having all your appliance. I don't understand. Any plans to get a ranch scooter? What is that? What's a ranch scooter? A ranch scooter? Uh, how many acres do I have? Just one. Just one acre. One and, one and a half. A cart, just like a golf cart. Um, I want a golf cart, but everything I'm trying to I'm trying to do things in an order. Do I have trail cams? Yes, I do. As a matter of fact, I could show you like where I just came in down my driveway. Trail cams, alert systems, all, literally all around the acres. Um, it made me lose my train of thought. How cold does your area get in South Carolina? It's going to be, the lows are going to be in the thirties all week, probably for the thirties and the forties for the next two weeks that I can see. Your one acre looks large. It's, it's a grower, not a shower. So yes, <laughs> it just, it just looked like that. 
um, will you be considering using compost toilets in your children's home? We're using compost toilets now. <laughs> We're using them now. We use compost on top of the pudding. Yeah, because the kitty litter thing got old quick. That just cost too much money. Does your trail cams run by solar or battery? Um, they actually run by solar on with a little external panel, but I don't, I don't like them. I don't really like them. Are you ready for the cold snap? Yes, that's exactly what we're work. Listen, you see this? I'm swear, can I see it? Uh, you can see my wood right here. See my wood? We, I got piles and piles and piles of wood behind there under my awning. And this is the stuff I'm about to split up. But we're bringing all the wood that we chopped up from over there and bringing it over here so it can hurry up and dry. We got a lot of dead wood, a lot of dead trees. So we got a lot of good wood that's probably get us through this two weeks. And we got plenty of propane. That's my fueling station where all my fuel, my gasoline, propane, kerosene, everything is over there. And, and wood. Do you ever plan on getting a dog on the land? You, um. I'm not going to go down that path right this very minute because I don't know why I get that question so many times. That is, that is, that trips me out. <laughs> um. Everybody tripped out when they saw me with my daughter's dog. Uh, can you live in that building behind you? You can. You can. I'm not, though. No, Lady Led don't got a dog. Neither one of us got a dog. The dog you saw us with is my daughter's dog. That Pete, Her name is Peach, and she lived in that tent with them. Like I told y'all, I'm not scared of dogs. I like dogs. I just don't want one. Is is EcoFlow your first choice for solar chargers now? Um, we I talk about that later. I talk about that later. That's just the grid setup I got right now, and I talk about that later. Okay. Um. Right now. Right now, I talk about it a little bit. EcoFlow has a system. Wait a minute. Is that Coleman oven under the canopy any good? Looking at getting one. It's, I don't do no baking. So, I've used it a couple of times. What you gonna bake outside? Like for real. That's where that's where it got kind of weird. And I got it for just in case. You know what I use that that oven for? I really use that to when I'm done cooking to put my my food in that so bugs don't get on it. I don't even really baking in it. What am I baking? Biscuits, buns, cake. I'm not doing all of that outside. You know, I ain't got that desperate for a birthday cake where I need to be trying to cook it over an open flame in this little metal box. I ain't got that desperate yet, you know. Um, and it was another question that was, oh, the EcoFlow. The reason why I'm using the EcoFlow as one of my main systems, one of them, is because their system that they have set up is a I got it set up as a hybrid. And that's a video that I would love to talk to people about, but don't nobody want to hear it. Let me I'm going to show it to you, damn it, cuz I can't I just got to show you this. I'm not baking no chicken. That's just doing too much. I'll put the chicken on the grill first. Before I go through all that. Now I'm going to show y'all something. Why I I set the EcoFlow system up. When It's hard for me to explain this properly. My Here's, matter of fact, let me plug this in. This is the plug to my RV. 
Okay. So now my RV is running. Do you use anything to keep Do you use anything to keep outside water from freezing? Water ain't going to freeze here. I mean it will, but no, I, I don't. If I find some frozen water and I need it, I just boil it and heat it up. The EcoFlow system, now that my RV is hooked up to it, okay? The RV is hooked up. Once these two batteries, this is 4,000 watts. 4,000 watts. Once I'm in there, I'm watching TV, I'm cooking, I'm using all the power, and I use up almost 4,000 watts, when this gets down to 30%, I, listen, when this gets, when these two get down to 30%, the smart gas generator, this sends a signal to this and say, it says, I'm at 30%, we need more power. This one says, okay, the gas generator automatically kicks on Charges both of them back up to 4,000 watts to 100%. And then, once it's at 100%, it cuts itself off. And my RV is only running on those. So, during the daylight hours, the only thing that's charging that, those EcoFlow batteries is the EcoFlow 400 watt solar panel. This charges those all the way up during the daytime. So it's just a whole cycle. So during the day, during the day, the solar panels is charging the, the, the generators. So at night, depending on if I'm just doing entirely too much crazy stuff with the power and the energy in there, use it down, the gas generator kick on. I don't have to put gas in the gas generator because it only uses a little bit of gas to charge those back up. It uses about 20% of its gasoline to charge those back up. So it'll keep doing that over and over and over and over again. So just to let you know, like last night, I was gone, right? I was out doing something completely different. And the kids called me and they said, Dad, are you on the land? I said, no, I'm still gone. They said, well... The cabin lights, my cabin lights came on and the, the, we hear the generator. We thought that's you. No, I, I try to tell them it's all automatic. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to be here. And the sweet part is with the app, if they called me and I wanted to just cut it off, I'd just be like, boop, cut it off. So that's why that runs that it's, it's a hybrid. And I think any, any solar generator company listening to me right now or watching me right now, I'm telling you, the first one that comes up with a hybrid system like this, a all-in-one hybrid system, you got my vote. I will sponsor the hell out of you <laughs> because that will be the ultimate. What EcoFlow is doing right now, that, I keep wondering why there ain't nobody trying to promote this. I use a little bit of gas, a little bit of solar. Little bit of gas, a little bit of solar. I never run out of power. What about an outhouse? What about it? You got an outhouse? Can you recommend a septic tank? No, I can't install it. it. It wouldn't matter to you anyway. You somewhere completely different, I guess. And I don't even have a septic tank. So I don't, I ain't went that far yet. Is the EcoFlow generator loud? It's a hint, hint louder than the Honda. But it's very quiet. I'm going to give that. It's super quiet. The Honda still went in the quiet department. Because the Honda, sometimes you don't even know it's on. But this one, super quiet. It, you forget about it. The Honda, you just don't know it's on. This one, you forget about it because the, the noise is so subtle. Now, uh, I got another question. Somebody, somebody asked me earlier, can I stay in this, this 
shack behind me. No. <laughs> no. And I know you wanted me to uh, emphasize on that and why. Okay, let me tell you why. True story. I told you, I met the man that owned that. He's the one that cleared all this land. He got stuff in there. He don't want it. He don't want the stuff. And I know everybody about to get on me. I know you are, but you, I, look, you can do it. You can say what you want. I'm going to tell you how I feel. All his personal, a lot of his personal, nope, ain't no black mold, ain't no leaks in there, nothing. Nope, no, no black mold, none of that. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Ain't nothing wrong with it. So, so, 90% of y'all right now is, is thinking or saying to yourself, if, no, if nothing is wrong with it, why don't you just fix it and stay in that? How many people are saying that right now? Ain't no black mold, ain't no smoke, ain't no nothing. Matter of fact, it's it's 80%, I'm going to say 75% move in ready. 75%. How many people are saying, why don't you just move in that and save yourself some money? Everybody going to think I'm crazy. Long as God and my wife don't think I'm crazy, that's all that matters. I don't want to live in that. And I'm going to tell you why. Once that man told me his story of what he did on this land. No, it's, come on, cut the crap. What he did on this land, how he did it, everything he did, the path he took, and when he brought that here. That's when everything went haywire. Did you hear what I said? His story was, as soon as he put this on the land, everything went haywire. No, it's not the legality. I own that now. He don't even own it no more. I do. That's why I never, I never showed it in my older videos. Because I didn't own it. That's why I kept playing with the camera. I own it now. It's mine. It's in my name. And I'm going to have it destroyed. And carted out of here. Um... <clears throat> I don't want it because his story was so pitiful, so horrible to me of the stuff that I'll be trying to tell everybody about. Do your dog on due diligence or this can happen to you. I know you ain't going to feel me, but please just listen. Just please listen. I am a great believer in energy. And I know, and I ain't talk about the cliche that everybody like, yeah, positive vibes, energy. I know that's going around a lot. I'm talking about, I've always felt like, look, if if you a person and you always arguing and you always bitter, you always, I don't want to have nothing to do with you. I just really don't. And it's certain things that I won't touch. I'm going to be honest with you. That house got some stuff in it. I would love to, I would love to have. I even told my daughter, don't take nothing out of this house. Don't you take a damn thing. It got some nice stuff in it. It literally has some good stuff. I don't want nothing out of that house. After he told me about his luck and all of the things that happened to him, and all, I don't want that energy on me. I don't want to have nothing to do with it. He said, and he listen, this is what he told me. The, the best thing that ever happened to him out of this whole thing was this land right here. I'm cool with that. He said, as soon as he put that house on here, everything happened bad. It happened so bad, it, it destroyed him from the inside out. So I asked him, I said, brother, all your stuff is in there. I don't even want the house. I asked him, did he want to take it? When they scammed him on this land, listen close. When they scammed him on this land, he didn't want to say it, but I know what he wanted to say because he kept stuttering. I think he, it gave him a mental breakdown. It destroyed him. It destroyed him so bad 
that he said he can't even bear to look at the land. He was walking this land with me and telling me this story. He said, just being on this land, man, just I can't bear, I can't bear to look at it. I asked him, did he want all? I said, man, you got a whole house full of stuff. His, his whole life is in there. Listen, his whole life is in there. Personal stuff. Family photos, right? Family albums. His mama, his children, his ex-wife or wife, whatever. His whole life is in there. I thought to myself, the energy that destroyed a man to the point he don't want to step foot in there ever again because it crushed him that bad and, and, and almost drove him crazy. I don't want that. I, I'd rather live in this tent or this RV like I've been doing. I've been in there four, maybe four times, five times. I'm not, I don't want, and ain't took anything out of it. Look power tools because he built the other side of that other side y'all seen over there he built that whole other side it's really a single wide but he built it into like a double wide i don't want nothing nothing it it probably got if you add today's prices of lumber it probably got 60 about sixty thousand dollars fifty or sixty thousand dollars worth of lumber on the other side i don't want none of it that I could use. Can you give it back to him? I try. He don't want it. He don't want it. He don't want that trailer. And he don't want the stuff that's in it. He don't want his family photos. His albums. He don't want to have nothing to do with it. And I kept saying, man, are you sure? This your stuff. Look, power tools. Everything a, a, a carpenter or a mechanic would ever dream of. You name it. It's, he got it. I don't want to have nothing to do with none of it. What about donating to the Salvation Army? Ain't nobody coming to get this. Ain't nobody coming to get that. Because I was trying to, somebody, Jim Stone said, very strange. I told you this whole story of how we got this land is strange. Everything about it is, is like a, a novel. So you're going to sell his stuff with with the trailer and I'm not you don't understand see I told you gonna think I'm crazy I told y'all gonna think I'm crazy that's what I said what up led I'm in the late um what would you put the pond land necessary for you hold on hold on I told y'all y'all gonna think I'm crazy because see y'all thinking about the materialistic part of the game I'm thinking about the energy I don't want to have nothing to do with that I don't listen to me to me that's blood money to me you didn't hear his story I don't I don't want to even walk in there no more here go one right here I'm about to I'm about to bust your head open right here it's about it's about four or five hundred dollars worth of nails and screws inside there it's about four or five hundred brand new boxes of nails brand new containers of screws all kinds of all kinds finishing nails roofing nails you name it all of that in there i don't want it i brought my own damn screws and nails in here i don't want to i won't touch them i don't want matter of fact me and lady led was like soon as soon as we done with that paperwork you ain't about to see this in a minute I didn't want to show it to you at all. In a minute, you're you going to see all the way back to the end of this land, to the back. Because the I don't... The story that he told me and the emotion that he gave me when he was telling that story, ah, me giving that to somebody, me donating it, I feel like I'll be passing on that blood money. I'll be passing on that badass energy, that bad wuju or voodoo or whatever you want to call it. I know y'all think I'm crazy. I know. I know. Everybody I tell this story to think I'm nuts. I don't want to have nothing to do with it. 
nothing. And everybody in here like, this dude's stupid. You can say whatever you want, call me whatever you want, I don't care. I got, I got morals. And some of my morals is like this, for instance, if, if a man, to me, okay, I'm going to put this in a better term for you. To me, if this man just died and his wallet fell out and it's about $10,000 in the wallet, it's hanging out. He just got hit by a car. I'm not taking his money. Nobody's around. Nobody's watching me but God. No one good and well. I don't know where my next meal coming from. I'm not taking that man money. I'm not taking his money. That's what that is to me. That man, that man, like he died inside. If you heard his story, it's like when he just talked about it, you could hear, you could hear the sorrow of how they they scammed him. I don't want nothing. Listen, your dude got trophies, awards, gold medals for whatever. There's probably real gold. I don't know. In there. Because before I bought the land, not before I bought, I'm sorry, after we bought the land, I finally went in there. It's stuff in there where we was just scratching our head. Like, who would leave this stuff? As soon as I bought the land, I set cameras up all around it because I thought somebody lived in it. This stuff is still in there. It's washing machines, dryer, his washing machine, dryer, stove, oven, kitchen, the dining room table. It's set up like to go live. I don't want to have nothing to do with that. Some stuff ain't worth it to me, family. I know everybody is like, oh, no, that's crazy, man. You could. I don't materialistic stuff come and go. But that energy lives on. That energy of that stuff in there. I don't need that in my life. I can make my own bad energy if I want to. I don't need another man's sorrow. And I, I wouldn't even feel right walking around. He got a... Um, It's a it's a a, a a knife in there. It's a nice knife. I don't even know what kind it is, but it would be wonderful in my collection, right? It's in there. I don't want that. I don't want it. I kept begging him, please take this stuff, man. At least get your stuff. He's like, I can't. And he older than me. He was like, young man, I can't. I can't do it. I can't do it. Okay. Did you guys bless the land? I, I don't even know why you got to ask that question. Um, here's the, here's the, I'm going, I'm going to show y'all something that you won't believe. Um, I know some of y'all ain't at superstitious or you're not, or feeling about, you don't care about energy and, and all of that stuff. I get it. Can I tell you, can I tell you a story? I don't think I've showed you this. Can I tell you a story? I'm gonna take you to, I'm gonna take you to the place just so it'll, it'll hit harder when I finally show you. When we first saw this land, when we first saw this land, you can see it real good right now. When we first saw this land, you see this pile right here? I'm going to take you to it. When we first saw this land, let me get you in there. You see this pile of rubble? Y'all see that? This used to be a shed, maybe a 12 by 16 shed. He built that. 
This was standing when we first saw the land. It was standing. And we closed on the land. I got the deed in my hand. Came to visit the land. It fell the same day because we was here the day before. We was here the day before the closing. We closed the next day, came to the land, it fell. I need to tell you that because that's an important part of the story. When we first, when we first came to this land, um, that shed was standing up. And through these trees, because these trees grew up around it, right? Through the trees, I peeked in there. And I saw something that none of y'all going to believe. You're going to think I'm lying. You're going to think I'm pulling the wool over your eyes. You're going to think this is a joke, a scam. But I just want you to understand something. I have nothing. Okay, here you go. I have nothing to do that for. I have no, nothing to gain by Lying or stretching the truth or making up some kind of ghost story. I looked inside that shed. And I saw a picture hanging on the wall. It was a bunch of books. It was a bunch of Bibles. She had Bibles and, you know, uh, spiritual, spiritual he was a spiritual man. It was a it was a picture on the wall. A hand-drawn picture. A hand-drawn picture of him. A hand-drawn picture of him. I can't make this up. Lord is my witness. Lord is my witness. Out of all this junk in this shed and these books and these Bibles, it's one picture in a smack dab in the middle on the wall inside the shed. I recognize something. This dude look like me. That hand-drawn picture looks like me. No, stop coming up with all the... The ghost stories. There ain't no ghost stories, okay? Everybody wants this to be be X Files. It's not. It's none of that kind of garbage. Nobody was murdered. None of that crazy crap. It's just real. This, it was a picture that looked just like me. It had on an army helmet. Stick with me. It made me break down and cry. Is what it did because I knew this was my land. It had an arm, the picture had an army helmet on. And there was a card tucked down in the strap of his army helmet. Guess what it said? The number 73. <laughs> I've only told a couple of people here on YouTube that story. In person. And I'm telling everybody. It had a card. In the, in the doggone helmet. With the number 73 on it. And I still. I got the picture. When that shed fell. I reached in the corner. Now this is the other crazy part. When I reached in. It was the only thing. That you could grab. Out of that pancake of a shed over there. Everything else you see is smashed, right? That's why I showed it to you. I can't make this up. God is my witness. I knew this was my land before I even bought it. Ain't no reincarnation. It's just we don't listen to energy. We don't listen. We don't pay stuff no attention. I told y'all it's a, it's a message in everything we do. It's a message in everything we do, every move we make, everywhere we go. It's a message talking directly to you. You can go to Walmart, go in there, grab a loaf of bread on the way out. You didn't see nothing, but you went in there, grab a loaf of bread, and you came out the store. You just missed every doggone message that was just for you in that store. I broke down in tears 
went out. I grabbed that. I told my wife, I looked in the shed and I came back out like this. Like I seen my, like I seen a ghost. I came back out like this. I said, look in there, look in there. She looked in there and she said, oh my God, it's you. I can't make that up. It, it, ain't, it ain't serving me nothing. I don't tell ghost stories. I don't tell these, no, it won't serve me nothing. I'm just telling you, I knew Family, y'all don't listen when the Most High is telling you what's yours. Remember I just told y'all the other day? I just told you just the other day. You don't listen when he tell you he put that budget, he put that number in your head. You don't pay it no mind. Better start opening your ears. Stop being distracted by all the nonsense and listen to all of them signs and whispers that he telling you. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to post the picture on my community post. How many people want to see it? It's going to freak you out. Y'all been watching me long enough to know what I look like up close, whether I got a beard, whether I'm clean shaven, whether I'm bald or whether I got hair. Okay. I need to see hands up. If you want to see this picture, I'm going to show it to you. It's going to blow your mind. And the only reason I'm doing this and the only reason I'm telling you this and the only reason I want to show you is because it proves every word that I keep telling y'all about listening to that whisper when he tell you this is what I want you to do. And I'm going to prove to you that you are you are listening to the father. I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to prove it's me guiding you. The way we found this land, and then that. It's the most amazing thing. That's why I knew. I had no doubt. I did a video recording that I haven't shown y'all. I recorded myself crying, talking to the camera. I knew I would never release it, and I never will, to the public. But I was crying and I said to the camera, this is my land. This is mine. I don't, I don't know nothing about it. I don't know how much it costs. I don't know how many acres it is. I don't know nothing. I didn't know nothing. But I knew I, this is mine. This belongs to me. I might as well go piss on that tree and mark my territory. This is mine. I claimed it. My wife got on the phone, found out everything that quick. Listen, this is how fast it went. Deed in the hand. Wasn't no hiccups, wasn't no this, wasn't no that, wasn't no this, just clockwork. When you claim it, I don't know how I'm gonna pay for this. I got X, Y, Z amount of money. Guess what? Some money came in, fell in, right, right in, in the middle like a taco. Just enough. Okay. If you don't listen to him, you, you doing yourself a disservice. That's all I'm saying. If you listen, things start to happen. Things start to happen. You could, like I told y'all the other day, you could have two nickels to rub together in your pocket. You don't, but you looking at an acreage for seven acres, 10 acres. It's 70000 80000 You don't know where you're going to get $80,000. You don't even know where you're going to get $80 at right now. You don't have a clue. You don't have $80. You owe somebody $80. But you're looking at land for $80,000. You better be quiet and listen. You better listen. Because he telling you. That's why you put that number in your head. So this is what I'm going to do right now. Everybody that's in here right now. Come back, go to my community post in about 15 minutes. Go to my community post in 15 minutes. And everybody that go in there, what the hell? You see that? <laughs> I don't know what that was. It didn't even make no noise. Everybody that see that post, say, I was in the live stream. And then get, say, I was in the live stream. And then give me your opinion or 
tell me I was lying. Tell me. If it don't look like me to you, go ahead and say it. But tell me what you think. I'm going to do it right now. Everybody, let's get off right now, okay? It's going to blow your freaking mind. Imagine me with a helmet. Now, I, before I go, I got to leave you with one more thing. I got to leave you with one more thing so you truly understand. So you truly understand how miraculous this is, okay? Listen. My name is Leah Farmer 73, right? Okay. My name is Leah Farmer 73. My number is 73, like on the helmet, right? Lead Farmer, the dude, is in a army helmet and he looks like he's in the military, right? On the picture. Okay, I got my name from a movie called Tropic Thunder. And he called himself the Lead Farmer. Everybody's seen Tropic Thunder. You know where that came from. What was he? He was in the military. He was wearing that same freaking hat that's in that picture. Just so happened, 73 to Lead Farmer, 73. I want you to put that in your mind and you study on that real strong and you tell me how crazy that was. All right? I'm going to the community post right now. Y'all give me your opinion on that. All right, please give me your opinion on it because the father is real. You just got to open your ears and listen to him. With that being said, Lev Farmer 73, Lev Farmer 73, I love y'all and I'm out. Peace.